Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Joachim Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Wednesday, August 28th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 16, verses 4 through 12. Brethren, if it seems advisable that I should go also, they will accompany me. I will visit you after passing through Macedonia, for I intend to pass through Macedonia, and perhaps I will stay with you or even spend the winter so that you may speed me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not want to see you now just in passing. I hope to spend some time with you if the Lord permits. But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a wide door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. When Timothy comes, See that you put him at ease among you, for he is doing the work of the Lord as I am, so that no one despise him. Speed him on his way in peace, that he may return to me, for I am expecting him with the brethren. As for our brother Apollos, I strongly urge him to visit you with the other brethren, but it was not at his will to come now. He will come when he has the opportunity. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. Let us be attentive. The Lord said this parable. A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two? did the will of his father. They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the harlots believed him. Even when you saw it, you did not afterward repent and believe in him. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. Today's gospel is a telling of the story of the two sons, where one son commits to helping but doesn't, and the other refuses to help but then repents and does help. And so in this particular story, we have our Lord's warning to those who just want to give lip service to the responsibilities of service without actually doing the things that are called for in doing the service. And it's done in a way where the Pharisees are the ones that are seen as the transgressors, that they have committed to a life of following after God, but in reality they are only seeking their own advancement, their own wealth, and their own security. And so when he talks about this particular sermon, he then says, I say to the tax collectors and the harlots go into the kingdom before the Pharisees do. For John came to you in righteousness, he says, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the harlots believed him. Even when you saw it, you did not afterwards repent and believe him. So they are condemned because they don't follow through with what their words are saying. What do we do with this today? Well, first, let me point out that in the church today, we remember the story of Moses the Black. Moses was a criminal and, in fact, a murderer who later repented followed after Christ, and actually became a great monastic and died as a martyr. So he is the one who said no at the beginning and then went and repented and followed after Christ later on in his life. So he is seen as quite righteous because of his, not his earlier life, but his later life. So it's always good to know that we always have hope. We always can change and turn away from ways that are less than helpful to bring us into eternal life. And instead, 
we repent, we pray that God will forgive us, and he will. And then we go and we live a new way of life that is much more in accord with what he teaches us to do. This is available to all of us. It is never too late until we draw our very last breath. And so we need to be mindful of this. And we need to be like the son that does repent of what he said, I will not go, and then goes and does the things. But we also, at the same time, need to make sure that we don't just say yes when we have no real intention of following through with what we have been asked to do. It's one thing to wear a cross around my neck and to say, yes, I am a Christian, but if my activities make those words a liar, then I myself am a liar and I am not righteous. But if I do the work that St. Moses did in being a robber and a murderer, not that I am, but that if I did, but then I repented, then the opportunities for God's mercy to shower upon me are far greater than just saying the words and doing nothing. This is something that we wrestle with, I think, in this culture. There's an awful lot of talk about being Christian believers, an awful lot of talk and posturing about what is believed, but there's not a whole lot of light that is shown on what is done. It is one thing to be against a particular political position, but if nothing is done, to show the mercy and love and patience and reconciliation of God in turning away from those activities, then I'm not sure the saying no to those activities is holy in and of itself. Let me be really pointed. There are many that are against the practice of abortion, and that's fine. But the question remains, what is done with the babies that are born of women that cannot afford them, or born of women who do not want their children, or born of women who just have no way of getting out of poverty themselves? Are we caring for those women? Are we caring for those children? If the answer is yes, then by all means, show the position. But if the answer is no, then I'm not really sure what's at work here. So we need to be mindful. And I realize this is controversial, but we need to be mindful of our positions, our political positions, our stances. But we also need to make sure that our actions are in accord with what those are in a way that shows not just the illegality of what is being done, but the merciful response that is being shown in relation to what we see as something that should not be permitted. Now, I will say, there are organizations throughout the United States that I can mention. I'll point to one in particular, the Treehouse in Wichita, Kansas, where they actually do care for the well-being of the mother as she goes to full term, as she delivers the child, and after the child is delivered. Work is done to make sure that the woman is properly cared for, that she has the things that are necessary for the baby to be in good standing. Diapers, clothing, education for the mother, formula, these kinds of things are offered. Now they come at a something of a cost. The mothers have to go through some form of education. Some of the forms of education are just in learning how to be a good mother. Other forms are done so that they can advance themselves and maybe get a workable job so that they can afford to feed their children. This kind of work is good work and should be pointed out and celebrated as an effort that is being done to show that there is an alternative to the matter of abortion. That's great. There are other situations that abortion is dealing with, and I'm not going to get into that. But what we see in this particular example is a way that a community has stood up and offered to help those mothers that are going to decide to keep their babies. This is a blessed organization and should be really copied throughout all of the cities of America. These kinds of things can be done in a way that show that indeed mercy does triumph over everything else. So we need to be mindful that we be the children of the Father that say yes, 
ultimately through our actions, through our activities. And our words, no matter how profound they may be, are nothing unless there is some form of physical or actual thing that is done to back those words up. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and everyone you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.